Rebuilding a tangy model steam engine part 12, reprofiling the crosshead and playing with the crank web. In the last episode, I found out that there was a major problem. And here is the problem, the stroke of the engine is far too much. The original piston was hitting both ends of the cylinder inside it. So I made a very special, very thin piston, but it was still a problem. It's time to dismantle the engine and do something about it. With the crank pin firmly held in the chuck of my Boxford lathe, I'm using a Barco adjustable wrench to remove the crank web from the crank pin. If you've been following this series, in an earlier episode I did mention that the crank shaft was a bit bent. So I'm going to make a new crank shaft and crank web anyway, but before I do, take a close look at this image, particularly the centre of the crank shaft part in the middle. The centre hole in the crank shaft isn't in the centre of the crank shaft, and that is very odd. But no matter, because for the moment I'm going to use the old crank web and I can drill as many test holes in this as I like now because the part is scrap. Using a centre drill as always first, followed by a twist drill, and then threading the hole M5 for the existing crank pin. This first crank pin mounting hole is 1 16th of an inch further in towards the centre than the original one was. So now it's drilled and threaded, and I've put the crank pin back in temporarily, not very tight, but it's in there. And once again, it's time to reassemble the parts. I'm fitting the temporary bolt that holds the small end into the crosshead, but this will be replaced by a plain pin. I'm not bothered about that at the moment, I'm just concerned about the crosshead travel and whether my original piston will fit back in the cylinder. The travel of the crosshead is definitely less, as you would expect. So it also follows that the travel of the piston rod and the piston itself will also be less. There's not much crosshead sticking out of the guide now. In this clip I'm removing the test piston that I made. This was the thickest piston I could fit. Look at it against the original. But the original one is a little bit oversized I think. I'm going to have to machine that down. I did after all machine this original piston to no specific dimensions anyway. I don't need it to be very tight into the crosshead for the test so I'm just spinning it in using the scriber. It turned out that this piston that I made at first is a little bit too big, so I'm machining it down. First of all one end, then I reverse it on the rod and do the other end. As you've just seen, I removed the sharp edges using a piece of sandpaper, and that's just so I don't cut my fingers when I unscrew and screw the piston back on the other way. Once again, all I'm doing is thinning down the flange on the piston. Really, the piston ring is a bit thick, but it will be okay. I've refitted the piston ring to the piston, oiled the entire cylinder and the piston and now I'm fitting it in place. I'm not going to tighten the piston at this stage because I need to make a new piston rod because this one's the wrong length anyway. The length of the piston rod was initially an estimate but now I can take the measurements and make one the right size. I'm going to shorten and slightly reprofile this crosshead so it's over to the milling machine to do that. You saw a very similar milling operation to this in the last episode so I'm not going to dwell on it for too long. I've speeded up the sequence just to get through it. Here I'm milling the edges of the crosshead at the angles that I need. First one side and then the other. And to finish the job I reposition the crosshead vertically in the machine vise and clean out the center. Machining things freehand like this does take a bit of practice. But eventually the job's done and it's time to put the engine back together and see whether it works. And this time I'm fitting the cylinder cover. Well temporarily anyway. If you remember when I made the cylinder cover, the register is a little bit deep and goes too far down into the cylinder, so I now have to correct this. The reason in the first place for leaving the register quite deep was so I could hold it in the chuck by this to turn the fancy front of the cylinder cover. I've accurately positioned the cylinder cover in the chuck by pressing it into place with the tailstock chuck, and I'm currently machining away about 50% of the cylinder cover's register. I'm not removing too much because don't forget this will need a gasket, it will be a very thin gasket. I need the register to locate the cylinder cover on the cylinder itself. That should be more than enough. Now it's time to fit the cylinder cover using a couple of bolts to the cylinder and see whether the piston goes full length without hitting either end. I've connected my small Bosch drill to the crankshaft and now I'm going to turn over the engine and see what happens. <laughs> 
That is very smooth, no tight spots at all. I'll speed up the drill a little bit. Now the rebuild is back on track. A tiny bit of the crosshead protrudes past the guide, but that is OK. The way this engine was built, and I'm particularly referring to the crank web and the crankshaft, it could never have run successfully. I'm fairly convinced that this must have been a kit. A manufacturer would not have made an engine like this, and would think that the missing parts were probably thrown through the window. The next job is to make a new crankshaft and crank web, but that will be in another episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Thank <laughs> you.